there could be a herd of deer standing right there, and I would never know it. This week on Kentucky Afield. Football season is here, and that means the demand for ground venison just went up for the Miles household. We're in the woods looking for some. Next, we'll see how one of the state's most ancient fishes is making a comeback. The lake sturgeon are prehistoric fish. They're actually uh, ancestors to sharks. Then, we're in the woods with new hunters as they look to harvest their very first deer. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! My first musket. <laughs> first say Leo. Yeah, we're here to get the keeper. Here goes. Oh, Boom. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Ask any experienced bow hunter and they'll tell you that hunts never go exactly as planned. And when deer hunting, you never know when or where a deer may show up. Well, it's early September the very, very first week of Kentucky's archery season. And I'm here in a familiar spot in Shelby County. It's the same stand I hunted several times last year. Had quite a few encounters with some nice deer, just nothing I wanted to take just yet. I really didn't see myself hunting this stand this early because as farmers do crop rotations this year, this is in corn. There could be a herd of deer standing right there and I would never know it. So it really puts me in a situation where I have to set up here on the field edge and hunt the woods. Well, this woods is thick. It's 30 minutes after daylight right now and I can still barely see spots back in here. It's gonna be very, very hard to pick up a deer slipping into the woods. I'm gonna to have to stay on my feet, bow in hand, release attached to my string and watching because if a deer comes through, I'm gonna have literally seconds to field judge it and decide if I'm gonna take a shot and then find a opportunity to get a really good shot. Like all Septembers, my freezer's empty. So I'm willing to take a doe. Stay tuned because it's gonna be fast and furious. Literally if a deer comes in, it's gonna be, there it is, draw and shoot. She started getting a little nervous. You saw her smell, saw her smell. Thank goodness she was upwind. She couldn't wind us. And she went to turn to figure out which direction she was gonna go. Gave me a real tight window. I mean a real tight window to draw and get a shot. I think I put a really good shot on that deer. 
it was really close. Sometimes those are hard to hit because you shoot over them. But I think I put a really good shot on that deer and it sounded like I heard her go down. Hopefully it's exactly where I think it is. That's the next objective. Locate the deer as quickly as possible, get it out of here, and start processing. Well, here's my arrow. A couple things that you always want to do when you walk up on the impact site is first off, I'm going to take this arrow and I'm going to inspect it. First off, it looks like looks like all my blades on my broadhead. It's a Grim Reaper broadhead. Looks like they are opened and worked exactly like they're supposed to. The blood I see on here, it's got some little bubbles in it. It looks like a high shoulder shot, possibly through the lung. And it's blood soaked all the way to the tip. It's got a little bit of some bubbles on it. Probably a single lung shot if I had to guess. Such a high angle because this deer was right under me that it looked like it hit a little high, but that means it'll come out the bottom, which is, which is a really good pass through shot. Now, I'm not gonna take this arrow with me. I'm gonna leave it right here. This is the impact spot. If I, if I were to lose my blood trail, I know I can come back right here and start again. So, <clears throat> right off the bat, I'm seeing blood and I know the deer went this direction and I believe it hooked and came back around here. It looked like it ran a little circle. I'm already seeing blood through this way. So, I'm gonna start tracking this thing. Hopefully, where it crosses this creek, there should be a ton of blood. This is completely blood soaked. I heard the deer get to this creek. So I know it made it to the creek. I don't think it made it much past the creek. Just, there's just too much blood. Here's the deer. Here he lays right here. Barely made it past the creek. I thought I heard it fall down and here it lays. All right, well, here she is. Oh man, what a, what a nice looking doe. You can tell this deer is kind of transitioning from its summer coat to its winter coat. It's getting real thick and it's right in that process of shedding. I'll tell you what, this was absolutely perfect. The shot was in high and came out low, which is at that angle, you want to try to aim where you want the arrow to exit. And that's exactly what happened. It turned out to be a perfect shot. I couldn't be more excited to have this deer because my freezer is almost empty and I'm looking for some venison and some ground burgers so that I can make chili and tacos and nachos and all that type of stuff. Hey, it's football season, you know? So I'm looking forward to that. And I'll tell you, th this could not have turned out to be a better situation. I wanna get this thing drug out of this area. This is the woods right here that I keep seeing a buck on camera over and over and over. So now my goal is to get this deer out of here with leaving as little scent as I possibly can. I'm not even gonna field dress it in here. I'm gonna hook it up and I'm gonna drag it to the truck as fast as I can and get this thing processed, get it home. And I'll tell you what, this here is going to be the beginning of me filling the freezer this fall. The lake sturgeon is one of the newest reintroduced fish species here in the state of Kentucky. Now let's go catch up with fisheries biologists and find out what they're doing to manage this unique fish species. So we're here at the Peter W. Pfeiffer Fish Hatchery in Frankfort, Kentucky. We're gonna be marking sturgeon today. It's a lake sturgeon. This is a restoration effort where we used to have lake sturgeon that existed in Kentucky. So lake sturgeon are one of our really large, charismatic, big bodied ancient fishes. We haven't had a lake sturgeon that was native caught in Kentucky since 1954 and it was down on the Cumberland River. We started this restoration program due to the fact that this fish is native to our waters. Uh, it has, the range has declined due to overfishing, due to dams, due to pollution. So just like 
the elk and the uh, peregrine falcon and the deer and the turkey. This is kind of the fisheries uh, restoration project. And we have a hatchery building that's almost kind of built for our lake surgeon. They have recirculation tanks, which allow us to chill the water to the, the temperature in which they need. That has given us many years of 90% plus survivability, which is when we're dealing with rare fishes, that's a really good thing. So today in the hatchery, we're taking the fish that have been reared from, from the egg to this larger than fingerling size, and we remove scutes from the side of the body. Now these are the bony plates that line the outside on the body of the lake sturgeon. So by removing two scutes that are side by side, that creates a gap. And as the fish grows, that gap is preserved. So that lets us know like this is a 2007 year fish versus a 2010 year fish versus this year's 2022 fish. We have folks getting the fish out of the raceways into these tubs. We use an anesthetic to temporarily knock out the fish so that we can do the procedure. It doesn't harm the fish. And once that's done, we put them in a second tub of fresh water, which is the recovery tub. You know, the fish will come around within a minute or two, and then they go back into a separate raceway, and those are the ones that have been completed. And so we just cycle through this process until all of the fish have been marked, and then they'll be ready to go on the truck in the coming weeks to their stocking site. So the, the lake sturgeon are prehistoric fish. They're actually uh, ancestors to sharks and uh, paddlefish is another fish species in Kentucky that they're related to. They're kind of like a cousin. And so they're a cartilaginous fish. So lake sturgeon are kind of the uh, charismatic species for the aquatics world. We talk about the peregrine falcons, elk, deer restoration. This is um, one of these big fish species that grow up to 150 to 200 pounds and it's going to take a long time for them to get there. So thinking about this fish living up to 150 years, so you know, well past probably our lifespan. So we'll, in our retirement, hopefully we'll see these guys spawning and getting some natural reproduction. The lake sturgeon, they can live to be over 100 years old. So they're, they're long lived fish, they can outlive us. Some of these fish that we stock, I may never see the outcome of it in my career, but these fish hopefully will be around for a long time. Crossbow hunting continues to grow in popularity and is a great way to introduce a new hunter to the outdoors. And the best news is, Crossbow season is now in. Well, it's very early in the crossbow season and we have three hunters that have been wanting to get in the woods. You're actually our most experienced hunter today. That never happens to me. <laughs> From very first time in the woods, this is actually gonna be your very, very first deer hunt, isn't it? Very first. All the way up to been a couple years, but haven't been successful yet. You have taken some hunts, but have you ever taken a deer with a bow? No, not at all. So we're really looking forward to this hunt. We're on a piece of property here in Shelby County that is plumb full of does. And also has a couple really nice bugs. So let's go check in with our hunters and see if they're ready. So you've been hunting for a couple years. Right. And you've been successful. You actually have taken a deer before. Yes, yeah, so my first year I went hunting with my dad and we took two deer and then the second time I went hunting I took a couple of does to fill the okay. freezer. So I'm guessing you really enjoy eating deer as well. Yeah, I mean there's no meat like doe meat. That's yeah. something that I've heard everybody say and it really is true. My husband's really into hunting but I didn't really start getting into it myself until I went to like the Becoming an Outdoors Woman class or the Field to Fork. That was where I really fell in love with hunting and getting to meet all kinds of other women who enjoyed it too. So Anthony, super excited to have you out here today. You started watching hunting shows before you'd ever hunted. Well, as everybody know, uh, <laughs> the COVID yeah. kind of shut things down. So I watch a lot of sports. I'm an avid sport fan and, and uh, there was nothing on. And I started watching 
all these hunting shows. Okay. And I uh, just got more and more into it, and I just was like, man, I would li really like to try that. Have you ever had people in your family that hunted before? Never. Never. So Kids when from you... the projects, man, nobody. <laughs> Well, when you told people, hey, I want to try this deer hunting thing, what, what, what were they telling you? Did they going, hey, this is really cool, I want to try this too, or look at you like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know that Kroger's open, you can go get all the meat you want? Right. This is different. It's very relaxing, and hey, you may put some steak on the table, you know? You right. Can't, you can't beat that. That's what I plan on doing. Hey, good luck to you today. Thank you. Well, Joel, you're our vertical bow hunter today. So tell me a little bit about what got you into hunting. There was just something inside me that wanted to do it. I mean, wanted to learn it, wanted to learn a new skill. And uh, my wife and I were talking that uh, we'd like to learn where our food comes from and, yeah. and be able to harvest something here in Kentucky and, and be able to bring that to the table is, is really exciting. So you decided to reach out to find some classes on hunting. Yeah, my first class was the Field to Fork okay. Turkey Hunt. And I took that, and then I took the archery deer hunting uh, field of fork as well. Okay. Well, hey, bow hunting is one of those things. Uh, everything has to have lined up. Yeah. But I think you've got a really good chance to put some meat on the ground tonight. Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks, Chad. Well, we've got all of our hunters in their blinds, and we've got about three and a half hours till dark. Joel is our hunter that's closest to us, and he's literally 200 yards on the other side of this pond, and he is set up over a little field that's got some clover in it. The deer have been feeding in there very heavily every single night, so hopefully he has some luck. Our next hunter is Megan. She's in a little shaded area that is a situation where deer a lot of times come out earlier in the afternoon. I suspect she may be our first to see a deer. And then in the very back, we have Anthony. Now Anthony's on a spot that we were getting so many pictures that our camera batteries went dead that the deer were coming in really, really, really thick. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully we get a text real soon. I'm probably gonna regret it, but I might just wait and watch him. There's a doe. Just came out of the woods down there, about 50, 60 yards down. She's moving around a little bit. Like she's gonna stay right there on the edge of the woods. Like she's heading back in there. So just, just got a glance of her. Well, this hunt really has a deer camp kind of feel. We're already getting text. Megan has already seen some does. Joel's seen a couple does. Megan's actually got one really close to range right now. Unfortunately, Anthony is only seeing squirrels and songbirds, but he's in a great location. He's gonna be seeing deer soon. Doing all right. Just uh, anxious, excited. I'm not all the way sad that I didn't go ahead and take the shot. Away from you, you know. I'm not sad I didn't take the shot. I'm pretty excited though because those deer showed up like 10 minutes after we sat down. So I'm hoping that some more come by to graze and get to see some more. Smoke them, I don't know. I, 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 that felt good. It shot felt good. It went down right there. It went down about, about 30 yards. Whoa, we just got a super exciting text. It looks as if Anthony had a small buck come in, made a shot, and they said the deer is down. So we're gonna go check them out here in a few minutes and see what he got. Uh, 
There's your bolt right there. Here's your, here's your bolt. And you're shooting a raised broadhead. It's open, covered in blood. See those fletchings? Yeah. So there you go, there's that. And here's blood right here. It went right through there. I know it went right through there. I walk through there and see if you see more blood. It went right through there. Where? There it is right there. Oh yeah, there's the deer right there. That deer didn't go 80 yards. There you go, man. That's a great, great deer. Very first deer ever. There you go. What an experience, man. Man, I can't believe it, man. My, my first time out, man. That's... First time out and you, and, you, and you take you a buck in velvet. You may never go to the grocery store again. You may just go out and bring the protein home this way. What an awesome experience. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Oh, man, did I? I can't, <laughs> I can't stop smiling, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like a kid right now. <laughs> One trip in the blind, one buck down. That's pretty good right there. Smile. Come on, man. You can smile. I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, Megan, what do you think? I that heard was, you made a shot. That was so much fun. Yes, it was awesome. It was, uh, and, and I want to sit here and talk to you some more, but I also want to go look for her. Um, it <laughs> was go. pretty incredible. So do you think you put a good shot on it? I do, I do. We waited a long time for the right shot. Well, let's go see. Okay. Let's go see what we got. Oh, thank you. Oh, some. yep, right there. Okay. So this is a very well-used trail. You want to start walking that way or you want me to do it? Sure. We know it came in right through here. Let me check this way, just to be sure. Went the other direction. Hopefully turn around and come back this way. Over here, I just walked up on her. Oh. That's a big doe. That's a lot of chili. That is a lot of chili. That's a lot of right chili. Right there. You know, it didn't bleed a whole lot. And uh, we were trying to trying to track it, and uh, we just walked in here just a few feet from where we lost the blood, and uh, there she lays. I'm gonna grab a leg, and we're gonna drag this thing out here and get it out here in the light, and we can get a better look at it. Okay, great. Look oh, at she's that. Nice. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just I'm just so excited. I'm just so speechless. I'm so thankful that um that we got a, a good shot on a deer. For this time, patience was really the name of the game to get a good shot on a good deer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hop in and let's get a picture. So, how'd your hunt go? Yeah, it went good for not harvesting anything, but uh, we saw, we had a doe that came up and stayed within probably, I don't know, 100 to 50 yards of us for seemed like three hours. After that, you, yep. you actually saw some bucks, right? Yeah, we saw five bucks down in the corner of the field, <laughs> which is amazing. And uh, a nine point with uh, the odd kicker that came out, but he was a big, he would have been a shooter. I'm glad you came out and it was an awesome experience. You know, I had no anticipation that we would come out here and, and really get two deer on the ground, yeah. much less have three incredible hunts. Yeah. But that's the reason we bow hunt. Yeah. If you came out here and killed one every single time, it would you wouldn't do it a whole lot. Yep. You're looking for the challenge, you got to spend some time in the woods. Yep. What a cool afternoon. Yeah, it was nice. I, I really appreciate it. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. 
Seven-year-old Walker Hayden knows a really good bait to catch bluegill on. That's baloney. He caught this bluegill on Lake Cumberland. Nice job. Can you feel it? The temperature is starting to drop and fall is in the air. Make plans now to get outdoors. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.